Hi, welcome to Andrew Buckle run through of different formats of EC Comics. Now I haven't got all the formats. So anyone saying, you haven't got this, you haven't got that one. I haven't got them all. Like there's horror comics in the 1950s. It's a classic book, I haven't got that. So I can't show it. Let's just go through the ones I have got and let's start with an original comic. Now this is a coverless one. I've got a few coverless comics. I used to have lots of EC Comics in coverless. Regretfully, I got rid of them. And I think, no, but still too late now. So Frontline Combat, issue three, that's what it says. I don't, I'm not disbelieving it, maybe it is. I don't know every single issue in terms of, oh, that's definitely, but it's just great to see the original artwork. And I think just stunning, always superb. And you can go through obviously all these and you can see the adverts that obviously as it was in the 1950s. You can see there, I love all that, look at the letter in there. Boom, 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 etc. Prisoner of War, just absolute classic. Just really good. And of course you've got the story there, Sea Battle. Attila the Hun. This is one thing I loved about this one. It just had lots of stories, just not just the standard war stories of Second World War. It also include First World War, Napoleon, the whole range. But it is really nice to see when you see the original artwork. Unfortunately, of course, this one has got slightly rusty staples there. That's quite often the case with lots of these not perfect condition ones that are not slabbed and all that sort of stuff. But still, I love them. And it's great when you look, obviously, I'll just move that over there. So that's that one. You can see the style. And it's not the same, obviously, when you come to the later ones. This is 1999. This is Psychoanalysis. I love these ones. MD, Psychoanalysis, original EC Comics, and of course they added that from the 1950s. Many ways I wish they hadn't included that, but still they did. And let's just go through this one. And this one is a 1999 and it's a gemstone, gemstone publishing. Now, unfortunately I haven't got all the books with the different variations of gemstone, etc., etc. But you can see obviously it's not the same as the original because of course you've got that there, that wasn't in the original. I definitely know that. But you can see the colouring. Now the colouring is definitely not, if you compare it with this one, the same. Now, of course, this is 50, obviously 20 or 30, 40 years, a bit of time between the two, but still it doesn't look the same. I just definitely think it's been changed a bit. Now, do I like this one more than the other one? I'm not really fussed. As long as the colour is reasonable, I'm not going to say, oh, this, the original, is the best. Obviously, everyone will have their own point of view on that. But uh, you've got here case number 102. I still think that uh, the stories are just great, and that's the key thing. But I do love, to, obviously, the colouring. I'm certain in 100 years' time, what will happen, EC Comics, the colouring they have then, will be very different from the colouring that we see. And I'm certain with AI, there'll be even more changes, something the stories will be changing as well, probably changing as you read them. You think, hang on, that wasn't like it was last week. Who knows the way things go. Valor, Aces High, Psychonus. Of course, again, I have no idea if these were the same as the original adverts. I assume this was the thing, but uh, the way this is the original house advert you see, Hmm. I don't think it's exactly the same, but still, there's a few minor changes there. But it's still great artwork all the way through. And of course, you've got the back here and the letters. You've got the letters here as well. Now, these letters, of course, are not the original. Some seem to be possibly the original, but most are obviously clearly talking about things about Star Trek. So it would be very hard to imagine someone in the 1950s talking about Star Trek. That would be very weird. I know. Obviously, science fiction, they know the future. Still. And of course, got that advert there, which is, of course, and it says gemstone. Again, another clue that it's not the same. And of course, you've got mile high money, as it says there, and also the price guide on the back. But these are great. I love these ones. And you quite often pick these up for 50 pence to a pound. The These ones, these obviously coverless, used to be able to pick them up quite regularly. I haven't seen coverless comics of EC ones for quite a while. I imagine they go for a little bit more now, which is always a pity. I think coverless ones should be about 50 pence. Frankly, I think they've fallen to pieces. But still, that's the way well, everyone obviously wants them. Best of EC stories, artisan edition. Now, I've also got the artist edition. Now, of course, the artist edition is massive and maybe slightly different, but I, they should be much the same, I think. Obviously, I can't compare. I haven't got volume one or volume two of the EC ones. But this is the artisan edition of 
best of EC stories. And the artwork is superb, really sharp. And also, of course, got the added feature of all the entertaining comics there. You've got all the details up there as well. Horror wig, Hell's Bayer. And also, Time to Leave. I love that story. Time to Leave, a real classic time travel story. Really brilliant artwork. And the, this is, should be easily available still. Obviously, maybe if you're looking at this later, it probably is out of print. IDW, I wish I'd keep all of these in print constantly, but of course that isn't going to be the case. So if you really want this one, you really must rush out and get it now. Sound of Thunder. I mean, I just love this. Look at that. Beautiful blue artwork. I just love that. Al Williamson. Great. Story. Now, I haven't got the new Ray Bradbury book. Now, I'm not certain how the quality of the artwork in that. I hope to get it. But at the moment, for some weird reason, doesn't seem to be readily available in the UK. Maybe that will change. I don't know. And if it does, I'd probably get a copy. But still, I'm not saying why I would be getting a copy because I've got all the work already. But of course, that doesn't. EC fans always seem to end up buying about 50 different versions of all these things. But it's just, I think, beautiful the artwork in this. And all the way through, and of course, you've got great Wally Wood at the back as well. Just superb. Probably for me, this is the best. Though, I will say that, the truly best is the Russ Cochran suit. But I'm just going to get to that in a sec. Now, there's another psychoanalysis. Now, this one is a gemstone again. You can see psychoanalysis again. Minus. Brilliant artwork all the way through. Much the same, of course, same format. You've got the uh, letter there at the back. And, of course, you've got the advert there. New Direction, one, two, punch mags. Now, I assume that was the original advert. It just seems slightly not the thing that you would probably put nowadays, or 1999 anyway. Gemstone Publishing, obviously, that is a slight change there. But MD and Psychoanalysis. Now, here's another original one. Panic. Panic ones you should easily find I certainly when I've gone to comic marts and various places I found them for about 10 to 12 pounds in tatty state maybe the covers coming off kind of thing or slightly ripped torn and probably you're doing this it'll probably rip a bit more that's always the case with a lot of these in fact you can feel it just coming you can see they're splitting away but the artwork is great and again you can oh the cover is literally coming off as I talk but let's try and hold on to it so it doesn't completely come apart but I think it's just great. I love the Panic ones. Obviously, it's not as loved as Mad, but I find it's perfectly reasonable. Now, I don't, I've never like rolled around the floor laughing about it. It's obviously the humour of the 1950s. There's quite a lot of references that I am quite certain meant a lot to people back in the 50s. Maybe they should bring out a book that's sort of annotated version of these Mads and things, because sometimes a lot of things are probably completely lost on lots of people. Certainly to me anyway, and especially not obviously being American, even more so possibly, because I look at it and go, I have no idea what that, this is a low budget program. Empire State, tall stories for some, obviously I know Empire State Building. Man, dig those crazy pigeons. Obviously that's a, the Venice Sickens. Gold under its smell. I don't know, anyway. So Venice beckons, fall under its spell. I love Venice. Venice is an amazing place. But it's so, I wonder other place. Oh, frightful old London. <laughs> London is not like that at all. Certainly not now, anyway. I love Ipswich on the far. I'm your blind date. Again, I pick it. Can't even work that out. Sometimes, of course, some of the, it's blended a bit, so I can't see it. Weather report. Hot, not toddy cool tomorrow. Hot. Is that not or hot? I'm not certain. Still, it doesn't look like that in London in any shape or form. London is an amazing place. And Paris, oh, it's a lovely one. Fun loving Paris. Oh, exotic Moscow. And um, them, there, those. Just great, great, great stories all the way through. And of course, you've got some adverts at the back. Again, one of the things you don't see in here, obviously. So again, I just wonder if that, in the original form, had these sort of, adverts as well because it would have been round about the same sort of time 1954-55 but then you got binoculars direct to you from Germany imported graph optic lens so that's that one uh, what's on the back oh yeah you got prizes given I always love those ones you got here wood burning set Ooh, useful a red rider carbine no idea walking doll hmm. okay another original 
I love this one. Now this one is slightly best condition though. It's obviously had a bit of tape down the side there. You can see there, obviously you've got a bit of a fade in there, but still perfectly reasonable. I just love the artwork. And these ones, the incredible science fiction ones were super favorites of mine. So you've got you a rocket and look at that. Just absolute superb artwork. And again, that's why when you get the new ones, the artwork, the cover, I really honestly don't have a problem with the new ones. They, they, it just doesn't worry me when I look at it and I say, I think that maybe in the future it will be changed again and again and again. And people will come along to it in a hundred years time. And I'm certain these stories will still be read then and they will just be tweaked and changed depending on see which company be running them at that time. Cosmic correspondence. Of course, many of these stories people probably look at and think very odd, but still Shakespeare's still read. Why shouldn't EC Comics be still read in 100 or 200 years time? I don't see any reason. Bernie Crigston, I think absolutely brilliant, brilliant artwork all the way through this. So you've got those, you've got obviously a, a story there, good old stories, I love those ones. And can you protect profit by their mistakes? I don't know. But still, absolutely brilliant. You can see that superb artwork. And that's incredible science fiction. There was only three issues of that one. And I think uh, a real pity that they stopped doing all these ones. Of course, you can always think, why did they stop? Like psychoanalysis, all these ones and panic, all stopped. And it's just, anyway, I think that's probably going to be exactly the same as before. Obviously, oh, ones are 2000 and it's gemstone. I think I must have a gladstone. Must have, this must be a gladstone. I'm just going to get to one gladstone. Now, unfortunately, oh, I haven't got one. One of the annuals. I was going to find an annual. I didn't have this one's a double sized. I've got MD in the annual somewhere. And this one's a Gladstone Publishing. So you can see Gladstone there. And again, you've got the text there. Obviously not the same as the original. I think possibly the artwork in this is probably closer to the original ones in terms of the dot, dots. Maybe. And the colouring is definitely different. I don't know. I'm not on it. When it comes to this sort of thing, I am really, I'm, can only sort of look at it and say, well, maybe ish. Possibly same sort of style. Very tricky to say. Certainly different from this one, the gemstone one. This is more like the originals, I think. Vault of Horror, this one. If you look at this, I definitely think. Now, in terms of size, let's go back. This is. So you've got here, incredible, always think that for some weird reason, yeah, that is the case, that slightly, maybe it's just the way I'm holding it, that it's slightly wider. So that's the one thing that also is quite noticeable, that somehow, I think somewhere along the line, they've sort of, obviously the comics back then, 1950s, slightly different. So let's put that one over there, and let's continue going through this fault of horror. This one's a grim fairy tale. The Sleeping Beauty does actually some of you can look at that. I don't know without comparing, of course, the original. I haven't got the original. It this looks quite smudged. This looks really quite hard to make out some of the characters, certainly at the back. And I'm quite certain the originals didn't look. I mean, obviously, if you've gone to the artisan edition, I'm certain the artwork was very, very sharp. And of course, you've got letters there again. I assume. The letter HBO, of course, these are not the original letters from the uh, 1950s. But you've got there the Witch's Cauldron and Death's Double. Now, I don't know. I assume that this annual has a combination of different stories. I'm not. Does it say at the front? Doesn't give you. Oh, give some credit. Yes. Crime Suspense Stories and Tales from the Crypt. So it's number 39 and Crime Suspense number one. And you've got this one, Death's Double Cross. Brilliant bit of artwork there, and I love that. W. Allen Wood, just great to see that. But also, look at the way it's been the slightly cut very badly. That is really, I mean, I don't know who, now. I don't know if this was in the original, maybe somewhere along the line, this has been cropped by someone else. I don't know because you can see that is terrible. It's like it starts really quite, and then by the end, the bottom of the page, it's slightly miscropped. But it's possible someone's come along and I don't know. And of course, you've got an advert for this as well, the complete EC library. 
Love these ones. These, I'm just going to get to that one next. But then you've got all the way through there, you've got Hogarth at the back. And of course, another great little story there. And let's get on to the next one. This one is a Dark Horse one. Dark Horse book, Extra. Again, I love this series. Extra, MD, Psycho Nurse. Most people, I don't think, love those for EC Comics. They're my favourites. Just wish they continued with them. Wish they continued with the other ones, Weird Science and all those sort of ones as well. But I just thought, but the colouring. Maybe it's not everyone's cup of tea, the colouring. In many ways, I would have preferred if they had brought these out in black and white on the glossy paper. That's why I'm looking forward to the Ray Bradbury one. I think that's in black and white. So it'd be interesting to see. And I think it's glossy paper. So, so the sun's just coming out. I can see the shadows, <laughs> shadows and the light coming through there. My apologies on that. But it's really, still great stories. I love the stories and these extra ones. They are really good. I think it got really, not a great reputation, but Hong Kong. And I think they could have developed them even more. I think it was just a great idea and it could have been developed. And look at that. I mean, just a bit like the shock illustrated. And those sort of, I love this sort of approach. Now that is a much better way of having a two page text story than just having obviously the text story. You could put a few little bits like this, a bit like the original ones, of course, of the pulp novels that would have had this sort of, uh, maybe not as many panels as this, but I think it's quite reasonable actually doing the, uh, quite an interesting style. Still, you've got those story, you've got a continuing character. Some of the artwork is not brilliant. Some artwork is fine. And you've got front page story. You've got, the, of course, the letters. And the, the letters were always very complimentary. It was not, not like these people would come around saying, this is terrible. I mean, I mean, some of these, if you got in, I love the format they did it, the way they split that with a, obviously a drop shadow. I think it's just great. Extra was very good. This person put, extra hit me like a ton of bricks. Not in a bad way. <laughs> that would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? A ton of bricks hitting you. But still, never before have I read such a fast moving, interesting a story. Your idea of making the cover like a newspaper was a stroke of genius. And I think it was. I think these were great ideas. Finish your eyes saying, and of course, I'm certain they got letters that said it was terrible. But 99% of the time, most of the letters seem to be very complimentary. And I think the stories are absolutely great. Even if you might turn around and say, mm, I'm not so what's known about the colouring. But again, without the originals, unfortunately, I did have a couple of copies of extra. I might even still have a couple of copies of extra around somewhere. But it's one of those ones tucked away in a box or somewhere, somewhere around. These ones are fantagraphic. I love these ones. I, this one, I don't know. It's, it's okay. It's got some interesting, unusual stories, this one. This one's... This one's Doctor Horror. I think it's a fairly recent one. And you've got here. Look at that lovely Western one. Smoking six guns. And the artwork is very, very sharp with these black and white ones. But of course it's slightly smaller. Now you can see the format. Let's just get... Obviously I've got the original one here. Ow. It's clonking myself. You can sort of say that. It's exactly the same size as the original comics. For some weird reason, psychologically, they... Are they the same? They probably are. It just looks smaller. It's just somehow with because of the format and it's a book, it just seems smaller than the original comic books. But it's not. It's very strange. I didn't really obviously I haven't been putting it up against each other and just seeing see if it's the same size. But this one. Gentleman Gunman. Hmm. A bit suspicious of that one. Doctor of Horror. And I love these things when it says, oh, of course, turn in that page. I've lost it now. But they've got the, the way the titles just look great. Oh, there it is. Another suspense story from the Vault of Horror. Just love that way they put those. Sort of, obviously, the title obviously probably was Vault of Horror. But it could have been suspense stories. Really, really crisp artwork. This series from Fantagraphics, just superb. Absolutely brilliant. And that's how I'm looking forward to the Ray Bradbury one. And this one, The Witch's Cauldron. Dying to lose weight. And also they have essays. And I think essays are one of the key things. I wish every book would have essays. Marvel omnibuses, epic collections, all of them should have really good, you know, 10, 20 pages of essays giving details about it. Because a lot of reference, a lot of these things 
quite often, unless you really know, you know, you read the story, you think, oh, that's a great story, that's a great story. But sometimes, obviously, someone coming along and discussing it and giving references, giving information behind the scenes, why they thought that was a great idea to read, you know, lots of detail about it, maybe the source material that came from sort of books from the 1940s, 50s, you know, the idea, the approach, you just, you might not know the history, the reason why some of these stories are in particular form, because of course they don't come from nothing, nothing comes from nothing, so you've always, there's always going to be some sort of, well, the idea of, oh, that was a good idea, the pulps, Obviously, the Pulps had vast amounts of stories. These things would have been read. These ideas all go through into the comic book form. And the same with, obviously, later on with Marvel, DC Comics. Everything comes somewhere. And it's just nice that a person, a historian, goes through it and says, well, this is like a book, you know, the 18th century XYZ book that describing this story. And this is where, you know, that approach, that original idea, or Romeo and Juliet, whatever. All these things that just brings a bit more life, I think, to these stories. Anyway, maybe people are not interested in that sort of thing, but I've always been interested thinking, oh, well, where does that the ideas of the, in these sort of things come from? Maybe, you know, it's a completely original idea that. But this one is just great. Doctor of Horror, just absolutely superb. And this one's another one that's just great. Well, actually, I'm just going to finish on the best, probably, as far as I'm concerned. This is now the Dark Horse one. Now another Dark Horse one, this one's Tales from the Crypt. And it's just great, absolutely superb. And let's just go through it. As you can see, it's the soft paperback version. I've never known if it's soft cover or paperback cover. I've always called it just the soft cover. Flexi cover, it's not a flexi cover. Flexi covers always have a horrible problem there. But Tales from the Crypt. Now, I assume this is exactly the same as the original hardback edition, obviously just in the paperback form. And you've got here Crypt of Terror. Death Must Come, another illustrated suspense story. You've got there, just beautiful, beautiful artwork. Now, the colouring, again, you could argue, is it better or worse than the original? Everyone will have their own point of view. Thing is, also, they include the covers, which I think are just great. Love those covers. I, some, I mean, the gradient sometimes, that's just great. Absolutely superb. Death suited him. I was going to say death suited her. Also. So, I think that sounds like him. Still. And you've also got the adverts at the back and Saddle Justice, Fault of Horror. Just brilliant. This probably, other than maybe the Artisan Edition, is probably the, the ultimate edition. Ace is high. And I just love them, obviously, I've just chosen one. I've got quite a few of these books, but uh, Ace is High. And these ones are great. You've got the colour here, just absolutely glorious. And then you've got this, just amazing artwork. Now, my apologies, probably slightly browner than probably a person that's kept them in super mint condition. I do have a tendency to just leave them around, read them. And you can see they've probably over the years got a little bit more brown than they probably should be. They have faded a bit, but still, I just think they are just the ultimate edition. As far as I'm concerned, this is the masterpiece when it comes to EC. I wish I had them all. I haven't got them all. I have got most of them. I haven't got any of the horrors. That's probably why I've been buying the fantagraphic ones because they've got the horror stories and I just think they're brilliant. Now I have also got a French Tales from the Crypt I could show that, but it weighs a ton. You can't show everything, so uh, just suddenly thought of that one, just while doing this. Revenge, I mean, just look at the Christmas. This is just stunning. And this is why I like the black and whites, maybe more so than the color versions. That's why I'm looking forward to that Ray Bradbury one, because I mean, just first rate. And in many ways, this is nicer than the artisan edition, because the artisan edition is obviously a, a photo from the of the original artwork, but somehow, I think when you look at this, you really see the crispness. They really, it's this is taken obviously at the time when it was done, and they've got it super, super, super sharp. And it's just, don't think you'll ever, or was it done at the same time? I don't know. You know what? I have no idea the source material for this, but whatever it was, it is just the best. Maybe I should investigate. There probably is a reference saying where this comes from, but it is beautiful. 
and if you get a chance and these do turn up the book fairs I mean I've seen the mad one regressively someone just grabbed it just five seconds before me I thought, Ooh. and it was like five pounds or something I think oh I should have got that but still that's life and I just think these are just brilliant but they are some of the horror ones are insanely expensive the 500 600 pounds I've seen listed which is just well beyond really for me buying these books but if I ever see one at a reasonable price I probably pick up a box they do weigh a ton because you've got you get them in boxes of four and they literally are super heavy and I've bought them and lugged them all across London and I'm thinking oh. but still they're worth it because these are to me the ultimate just beautiful beautiful books absolutely the finest love them absolutely love them so Ace is high but of course they're like I say all the other ones modern love extra all of them are available in this format as well so that's a run through of all the formats I've got other people probably have got some other formats of course the best format everyone will sorry say is the original so there's the original incredible science fiction of course weird science and I've actually got a couple of those as well couldn't find them they're around somewhere but that's always the trouble sometimes and of course they have got a bit faded unfortunately or slightly browner they've had a few years and lots of enjoyment being read over and over again well I've had enjoyment from I don't know if the comic has an enjoyment from it hope you found this of interest and that you uh, also please put in the comments below what's your favorite format have you got a favorite do you love the Ross Cochran ones do you like the Dark Horse do you like the fan graphic ones do you like the Gemstone Gladstone ones or other ones other ones that I haven't even mentioned because there were like ones in there was cardboard ones that were slightly taller slightly bigger format I haven't got any of those I've seen them at Comic Marts never bought them but they're quite, often they're quite expensive so I've never purchased also there's horror co horror horror comics in the 1950s is another book quite often EC get one or two entries in various history books of comics and obviously they're always quite nice to see as well anyway bye